Cruising through the countryside is only one of the many things you can do in the new A4, Audi's latest creation to hit the market. This car may resemble your usual Avant, but look more closely. The A4 All-Road is an all-wheel drive vehicle perfect for the adventurous driver who wants more than just cruising along the road. This car wants out, off the road, where the fun really starts. And it's built for the job. With its permanent four-wheel drive and higher ground clearance, the A4 All-Road is ready to leave the streets behind. For the A4 All-Road, off-road driving is easy as pie. Even steep inclines, up to 60% gradients, are no problem. Audi's Ulrika Flex says the company wanted to offer its loyal A4 drivers more versatility when driving an A4. Ulrika maintains that the new concept is also meant to win new customers and that men will make up the majority of future buyers. She thinks those buyers value design above all, followed by the drive concept and the car's ability to conquer the worst roads. You'll find the usual A4 high-quality interior with its clearly arranged cockpit, free from unnecessary distractions. It's on the outside where this family station wagon reveals its sense of adventure. Like the radiator grill with its vertical lines, cased in a black bumper, robust and ready for off-roading. Sven Deckard lists the optical features that differentiate the new A4 All-Road from the Avant. The large wheel wells and side skirt, the new front and rear bumpers, the stainless steel underbody protection, and the big tires. Sven also notes the new suspension tuning and ESP and says the elevated undercarriage up to 180 millimeters is key to the A4's success off-road. The ESP stability system has an automatic off-road setting and tolerates more slip on loose surfaces. The 3-liter diesel engine pushes 240 horsepower and 500 newton-meters of torque. You can special order a 7-speed S-Tronic dual-clutch version, too. The A4 All-Road is not afraid to get down and dirty if the situation calls for it. In Germany, the A4 All-Road starts at 38,950 euros, not including the cost of the many trips to the car wash you'll need to make. It made a grand appearance at the Geneva Motor Show in spring, and now the new VW Polo is ready to hit the streets. In designing the new Polo, Wolfsburg appears to have taken a lot from the larger VW Golf. On weight and fuel consumption, the latest generation is lighter and saves on fuel. Thanks in part to its newly developed 1.2-liter TSI engine, it uses 20% less fuel than its predecessor of similar size. The Ford Mondeo will soon be available with a choice of fuels. The Mondale LPG will run on either premium gasoline, the E85 ethanol mixture, or liquefied gas. With this combination, the Cologne-based manufacturer is blazing new trails in running cars on alternative fuels. The Mondale LPG is so far the world's only passenger car that operates on three different kinds of fuel. Rain and bad weather are not exactly the ideal conditions to examine the performance of two great sports cars. For this round of tests, we'll all need to exercise a little patience. Former racing champion Klaus Nietzwitz says today's comparison will be a special one between the two newest Porsche Carrera 911s. Although both have four-wheel drive and the same name, Klaus says you'll find a small but significant difference at the back of the cars. That difference, says Klaus, is the lettering on the engine hood. Here the Carrera 4, 
And the Carrera 4S on this one. The S stands for a bigger engine and slightly better performance, says Klaus. We selected a closed off area to conduct the comparison tests. Here at Gross Dürn, a former military airbase about 80 kilometers northwest of Berlin, there's space enough for both sports cars. The four kilometer runway is perfect for letting them show what they've got. Even standing still, these cars look powerful and dynamic with their large air intakes at the front and the big tires. One difference between the two is visible at the rear, the tailpipes. The Carrera 4 has one, the 4S has two. The decision for many people on which of these two cars to buy, according to Klaus, comes down to this. If you want to race around in a sports car, or if you want to look like you are, you'll take the Carrera 4. If you really want to put the pedal to the metal, you'll take the Carrera 4S. We don't recommend you doing this with your car at home. The track here is ideal for our test drivers to push these cars to the limit. Compared to its predecessor, the performance of the 4S's 3.8 liter engine has been increased by 30 horsepower, 385. Fuel consumption, on the other hand, has been lowered, but in the 4S convertible, that still means 11.2 liters per 100 kilometers. And both cars boast the latest in Porsche four-wheel drive technology with an electronically controlled multiple disc clutch that distributes power as needed between the axles. The Carrera 4 comes up 40 horses short of the 4S, but its 3.6 liter engine still packs 345 horsepower. Thanks to its direct fuel injection, the Carrera 4 gets an impressive average 10.6 liters per 100 kilometers. But the way we're driving her today, she'll use up a lot more fuel than that. Klaus says one thing that has not changed since the 1964 introduction of the Porsche 911 Carrera, and that, he says, is the image of the person behind the wheel of a Porsche. He finds it interesting that 65% of all Carrera buyers, like himself, choose the 385 horsepower 4S version. Tschüss. If you're gonna go for it, then go for it. At least that's how most of the Porsche Carrera four-wheel drive buyers look at it. For 90,000 euros, you can have the Carrera four in Germany. That extra 40 horsepower for the 4S will run you an extra 10 grand. <laughs>